So I've been spending almost two months developing a game using Python and wanted to detail my experience on that, so let's get into it. Python is a widely used programming language and is considered to be one of the general beginner programming languages that you should learn, as compared to many other languages where you might have to specify the type of a variable and certain elements of code can become much longer. Which is not a bad thing always, but neither is attractive to beginners initially. Me personally, I don't really care about the difficulty of learning a language since this is just something you will have to experience to use it, but this was actually my first time really using Python, although it could be argued that GDScript, a scripting language for the game engine Godot, is similar to Python, and that may have helped me. But anyways, how exactly does one make a game in Python? Well, the most popular way to develop games in Python is to use the Python library Pygame, which is built on top of SDL, a popular and monumental free and open source software development library that has been widely used in game development. SDL manages audio, input devices, threads, shared object loading, networking, and timers, and for 3D graphics can handle OpenGL, Vulkan, Metal, and Direct3D 11 and also 9. It is the backbone behind very popular game titles such as Cave Story, Factorio, and VVVV. Now you may be asking, you say a library and not a game engine, why is that? That's because back then, the engine part of development was also done by you, the developer, and often, for the best performance, required the use of languages like C and C++. And while today, it is probably the best practice to make your own game engine, use a low-level language, optimize and understand everything as much as you can, why would a newcomer ever take these options down rather than going the easy way out that 9 out of 10 game developers would recommend, which is a game engine? I can personally attest to this, as I probably knew way more about game engines than I ever did about frameworks when starting out game development. So if that's the case, what is the best way to learn about the intricacies of game development without being lulled and eased into simple solutions for complex systems, as most game engines do? I think that solution is Pygame CE, as it is the best way to learn these complex systems in the comfort of the Python language. But you just said Pygame earlier, not Pygame CE. Well, the reason for its existence is why open source software is such a great thing. The TLDR of it is that the original Pygame project had poor and unprofessional maintenance, and the main contributors decided to fork Pygame into Pygame Community Edition, which is the current main Pygame distribution from what I can gather. Pygame still gets updated to this day surprisingly, but it's a redundant cause considering those main contributors created and migrated to Pygame CE. If you're interested about it more specifically, I would recommend watching the Fluffy Potatoes video about Pygame CE, which will be linked in the description and a card that will now appear on screen. Okay, now let's get into the actual game development. For this project, I decided to make a game themed around the idea of the name Python, so I took the idea of Pi from Pi and Phi from fight. Even though there's not much combat and it's not a very good name, I guess it just stuck. The idea is that you have to go through as many levels as it takes to reach zero in the decimals of pi and use math symbols to fight numbers. And honestly, even though it's simple, I guess it somehow stuck as a fun concept. When I started working on the game, I was traveling. So I was working on my MacBook Air and not from home, and that meant that I was working on the game less. In fact, I've been pretty busy the whole time I've been working on this project, so this is why it took me two months and not two weeks to make, because that's really how much work I put into it. I feel like this is important to mention because this was completely new to me, and while it was a challenge, like everything is, it was not hard in the way that you needed to invest time to understand the concepts. Anyways, I started by setting up the general project, specifying window size, making the sprites, and getting it to display on the screen. Rendering sprites on the screen is pretty simple. You specify what you specifically want to render, called flipping, and this part usually contains the reference to an image and its coordinates. The order in which you specify these blips determines what gets drawn first and last, pretty self-explanatory. Think of it like painting or drawing. After this process, you can then flip the display and this is what will end up getting rendered on our screen. Animation can also be done simply, although I didn't really try to be specific and have a frame rate for animation 
it was still simple to set up. Essentially in 2D, every animation can be an array of PyGameCE image references, and you can display each frame of the animation by iterating through each integer. Create a float that constantly increases and loops back to zero, interpret it as an integer for rendering the specific frame of animation, and that part is easily done. As for movement, this also ties into animation. But essentially, movement is an illusion. For example, if I were to translate an object from point A to B in one frame, and it was a large change, it wouldn't really appear as a smooth movement. But if I were to move it over in one second, and let's say it was moving at a constant rate every 60 frames, it would appear as if there is movement, and that is the illusion of smoothing movement. As for how I got the character to move around, the code to do that is pretty simple, since I just set the player sprite to be rendered on a variable I made for player position. I actually ran into some issues trying to implement this since sometimes it would only register one input and sometimes it would interpret input as a press and not a hold. But I decided to use an array to determine what the player velocity would be, which would then get added to the player's position every frame. Now let's talk about enemies. I had to make a big choice and I chose the easy way out, but I wanted to talk about why it's not a wrong choice either. The fact is, the entire game is in one single Python script, for better or for worse. And instead of instantiation, which I assume would be done with classes and whatnot, all the enemies are stored into one big array. The advantage of this, especially because everything is inside one script, is that I have reference to everything. And so programming becomes a lot easier, since I don't really have missing information per se but I know it would be a lot more nicer and optimal to do it the other way. In any case, I'm proud I managed to do it my way and figure out how to do it. I may actually use this method for a future project made on frameworks because from what I can tell, you don't really get this ease of interaction with instantiation. To explain this system, basically the enemies are rendered based on the data stored in the array, and later on I managed to easily implement conditions for if the player was in range of an enemy in which case it would take damage and vice versa. Weapons were also pretty self-explanatory as they used all the concepts I've discussed throughout the video so far. Text, music, sound effects, and pretty much the rest of the game was just pretty simple programming, and I managed to condense it all into one Python script that's under a thousand lines of code. Now that may sound funny, and I definitely could have optimized on some parts, but keep in mind that I'm not working with a game engine, I'm working with just a library, and all those functions that would usually be handled by a game engine had to be done by me. And ultimately, because of this, I think that PyGameCE is a perfect way to learn these concepts where the control of everything is in your hands. Traditional, now perhaps off-putting methods put into ease, but not as ease of usability, rather ease of the language that it's built for. And I think that this is something that anyone new to game development should try out. This single Python library has helped me break out of the fear of handling the lower level parts of game development and has given me much more confidence to work with frameworks. And now I don't feel as scared to try something like Monogame, which is something I've been interested in since I started researching it as a viable source for game development. Obviously, this doesn't mean that GUI editors for scenes and whatnot are bad, as it's not a hold your hand type of tool, but rather an efficient tool to speed up development. I believe there was even one for Pygame, but for this I stuck exclusively to my code editor. And that's making a game in Python. It's definitely a great way to learn important concepts in an easy way. Thanks for watching, and let me know in the comments what I should try next. I'm planning to perhaps work on a defold video, but if you have anything, let me know.